I had never thought of myself as being a university president. I had never thought of applying for a position. I got a few calls from time to time and I just said no. And then Winnipeg called and I said no, <laughs> that I wasn't interested. But I got to know the people in Winnipeg and I got to get a sense of what the university was like. And I developed a lot of respect for what they were doing. Uh, I liked the fact that it was an undergraduate institution, largely. Uh, and I thought that, you know, there were a lot of universities that were developed in the 60s in Canada. And most of them uh, were developed in such a way that they aspired to being full-service universities, everything. Law schools, medical schools, engineering schools, everything. The University of Winnipeg had a different history, and it didn't aspire to that. And I think that what that allowed it to do was to concentrate on the things that it did best. And one of the things I was most interested in was quality. I thought what I could probably do would be to motivate and to help bring even greater quality to the university. And that seemed to me to be really important in those days. I think that there was a huge buzz on campus before Marsha Hannan even arrived here. She was only the second female university president of a mixed university. I think there was a lot of interest as well, particularly among the women. I think that there was a sort of um, lamplight effect, if you like, uh, you know, sort of an electric bulb or something going off saying, hey, if she can do it, maybe we can do it too. I think that it's good to have a role model who can inspire in other women the possibility of leading, the possibility of going on to higher education, perhaps aspire to being a dean, a vice president, and eventually a president. It's a huge hill to climb, but having somebody who's climbed that hill makes it extremely important. Marsha was a very instrumental president. She uh, left a strong legacy at this university and uh, I believe that that legacy should be recognized. And one thing that I would single out would be the support that she gave to Annabelle Mays, who was the Dean of Education. She wanted to get an integrated Bachelor of Education program with a focus on inner city. This was a big step for the University of Winnipeg to have a distinct degree in education here with a focus on our location, the inner city. Every president deserves this honor to, uh, because there's so much of a life's commitment to that position that we forget that it's not just a job. And then there are the actual accomplishments that a president makes during that career. And in this case, they were significant. Uh, Dr. Hannon was able to negotiate the largest gift that the university had ever received up until that point. Uh, Dr. Ferdinand Eckhart wanted to create a musical memorial for his late wife, Sophie Carmen Eckhart Gramate. And so he started talking to Dr. Hannon about ways to uh, make a lecture theater into a recital hall. It was very adventurous because when we sat down, this room was just a squared off lecture hall, as I say, but we actually, to my astonishment, were able to punch through the rear wall in order to create a better stage. Who would have imagined at that time and place in our history that we could have done that kind of thing? I was certainly surprised. We couldn't have done this without somebody like Dr. Hannon, who first of all loved the arts, loved classical music, and understood the importance of a cultural series for a university. It isn't just a place of lectures. Uh, that makes it like a factory. That makes it like a community college, really. And uh, to have a cultural program where there's no connection to an academic program is a luxury. Let's face it, it is a luxury, but that's what the arts are all about. I would be remiss if I didn't uh, take this opportunity to say thank you to Marsha because she changed my life.
Marcia dedicated 10 years of her life here. She worked very closely with the board. She was very open, honest, high level of integrity, enjoyed working with the students, and had a passion to make the university a better place. I think the legacies are the things that she laid the groundwork for. She was responsible for the theater project across the street. She obtained the funding. She had the vision of acquiring an old Salvation Army Citadel, developing it into a theater, which is a first-class teaching facility. She was also uh, instrumental in transforming an old rundown gymnasium into a student center. Marcia uh, put a team together over the years that worked with city politicians, city transit planning for the closure of Spence Street. So the actual closure came about a few years later and I think it's a fitting tribute to Marcia for all the groundwork that had been laid.